Hi everyone, in this video I'll be painting some rat ogres. So these are from the new Skaven Tide box set and I just had to paint them for my Skaven army. So I sprayed them black and then I did a xenophore from above with a rattle can, some white. However, I, I didn't read, I, I actually ran out of uh, paint halfway through spraying, so I just used my airbrush. Uh, and I took off the shoulder pad for these guys too. So first off for the flesh, I just painted it all purple. It's been pretty thinned. Uh, you can also use a normal brush for this. You don't need an airbrush. It just saves time to use an airbrush. Next I use grey brown. So this is the first highlight for the skin. I'm using airbrush again. A zenithal effect. But you can, to be honest, you can do this with a dry brush. So if I didn't have an, an airbrush, like in the old days, I would just literally dry brush this and kind of aim from above and go down. So just try and look where the creases are in the clothes or the skin, the hair, and try and go against it just to pick out all the details. Especially like the six pack it's got, it's pretty built. These, these guys have been going gym. They've been uh, showing their gains. Uh, but yeah, just pick out all the muscles and from above. Then I use the final, well it's not really the final highlight, but it's the main highlight, decomposed flesh. Again, same process. And again, you can dry brush if you really want to. It's a good paint as well. It's kind of like Rakar Flesh if you're familiar with Citadel paints. So it's like a nice consistency. And it's I'm actually starting to use it more often for other things apart from skin. It's a really useful color. Now this is the final highlight, Luminous Flesh. I zenith for this one now, but I mainly focus on the top area, just where the light would be hitting it. And I kind of missed it from below a tad, because I still want to catch some of the previously mentioned muscles. And again, dry brush if you want to. It's really fine, and it, it's, it's a bit thinner, I'd say. It's very typical uh, for these type of colors like bright flesh colors to be a bit more watery or a bit thinner but it's if you just practice and just try it on different textures and you'll just get the hang of how much paint to use on your brush and you'll be fine Garrick's sewers now so this was a long tedious part on each of the models because there's three of them I just went over all the hair and the fur on the model now and it takes a bit of time and a bit of patience. And you just do this for all the models. And you can even use it for other Skaven models too. Like the, the Lord and the Claw Beast or whatever it is. I used it for that too. So now all the airbrushing was completed, I printed out some bases and now I'm going to show you what I did with them. So these models are great because they come with those little pegs on the feet and you can just plonk them out and then these are like toppers. So these aren't bases, they're called toppers because they're just like the top layer of bases and you can just glue them on. So I've started to use them more often now and they print much faster. And then I base it with a grey colour. Again, you can use grey sea, uh, rattle can, or to be honest, any colour. Uh, now I use metal, so I've glued it on, on the base, it's all there now. Uh, and then I use, I cover all the, like, the metal areas with this kind of dark silver. Because I like to start dark and then get lighter as I go along. And I use decayed metal to base coat all the areas that will 
be a kind of a brownie copper color later even a brass color so this is a really nice base color I would say for those type of things it's very similar to Warplock bronze from Citadel so if you don't have access to this paint you can just use Warplock bronze I also glue on the shoulder pads and paint them now. For the cloth I use Temple Guard Blue. I'm using air paint because that's all I have. It's a bit of a pain to use because it's so thin. So you're welcome to use any other blue paint <laughs> that's quite bright. Now I use Cadian Flesh Tone. It's more of like a pinky flesh color. It's a bit too healthy for these guys but it's great because um, there's these areas here like spots or what are they called like pustules so it's like a base color for that then I used XV88 to paint all the leather parts especially what well, to be honest there's not too much leather on these guys and then I use it on the wooden parts too and that's including the base this base is 3d printed as well then I use dreadful visage and I just go over all the flesh now with that. So I use this contrast paint because the base color before was purple. And I feel some of the airbrushing I've done has, uh, maybe I was a bit too heavy with it or a bit too liberal with all this painting and highlight. So it's, I've lost a bit of it. So I've just gone back and this has helped it. So I use Hashute Copper for the copper and brass areas. And usually I like to use this because it kind of uh, separates some of the different parts of the metal areas. Then I use Hobgrot Hide. And I use this just to paint over all the little spots and um, warts and uh, warts and all. And I also use it to, how to say it, like I dab a dot in the middle of each of these ones I painted earlier with um, the flesh tone. And this is like the pus inside, ready to pop. And it looks pretty disgusting. Now I use an airbrush again to use Screamer Pink. It's like a burgundy, I guess. And I just kind of slightly, uh, not so lightly here, but lightly uh, paint areas like the, which I've got like, um, you know, it's been stitched together. So there's like some bruising or inflammation. So I just go around and cover those areas, even the outer area of the pustules. And just to add a bit of extra effect and color and make it look a bit more interesting. If you don't have an airbrush for this one, it's a bit tricky. Um, you can try dry brushing the main areas, but or glazing, but it'll take longer. But it's if you can glaze, go for it. Just try it. And this is how it kind of looks. You can kind of dry brush parts of it, to be honest. Now I use Pterodon Turquoise. I kind of thin it a bit with water. And I have controlled movements and I just move it. I move the paint downwards. And I just be very careful and just have as few strokes as possible. Now I use Agrax Earthshade just to go over all those metal areas, even the silver parts too. So I use Eldari Emerald to paint the pipes because I wanted to have a something a bit different because I've got blues, I've got pinks and I've got purples and browns. So I think this green color kind of separates it a bit, makes it stand out. I use Raiklin Fresh Shade now to paint the pustule area and I, I found this very fun because you know when you start using shades that's when the model starts coming to life right? Like they call the non-oil, like the 
liquid talent. As soon as you put that on the model, it just makes it look so much cooler. And as you can see here, there's so many different colors now. And I don't know, it's just, it's getting there now. So I used this also over all the spots I painted earlier with um, Hobgrot uh, Hide. I can never say that. <laughs> so now I use um, Death World Forest to paint the base. It's a nice base color for rocks. Oh, and I use emerald for the water here. And now I'm using an airbrush to kind of uh, paint kind of a xenophore effect on the water itself. But I'm also misting it on the pipes as well. Just add a bit of like moss and grime to it. And it's also another way to separate it from the model. Because if the base is brown and the model's brown, it looks a bit flat. Then I use Ogryn Camo as like a highlight for the water. And again, I missed the pipes in some areas and I just try and make the base look all dirty and like, it's because it's a sewer, right? So it's full of bacteria and just lots of crap. <laughs> So for the stone, I started to spray, spray it in random parts, just to add a bit of interest to it. If you don't have an airbrush, you can just dab it with a brush or a sponge, and that should work too, or dry brush a bit. Then I use luminous flesh now, because I noticed some parts of the model are just a bit bland. So I went over like the fingertips, uh, the toes, the neck muscles, the six pack, the abs. Anywhere you think like ears even and especially this tail as well. It doesn't take long at all I had to do this similar technique with the vermin lord and that took ages And then I kind of glaze it on the muscles too. Now. This is the fun part. I used this uh, Flesh from before decomposed flesh and I just dry brush now the whole model and Before this point I wasn't really feeling the model You know it was a bit flat and as soon as I did this it picked up all the fur it also tied in all the muscles together, like the different highlights. I even went a bit over the fabric as well, like the, the cloth, uh, the, the pipes. And I even did it on the bases as well. And once I did that, the bases are like really nice greeny stone color. And then the fur had a kind of a brown kind of highlight to them. And it, I don't know, it just, after this point, the model just, it just felt more close to being finished. Have you had that experience when you're painting? There's like um, a long portion where you just feel like this isn't, I'm not feeling it yet. And then suddenly, once you do a bit of dry brush or some highlights, bam, it just looks so much more finished. So now I use Necro Gold. This is a great gold as well. I, I see more and more YouTubers using this gold too. Um, so basically I just dry brush the dark metal areas and you can see instantly the, the color difference. But you can still see that kind of dark decayed metal underneath it. It looks fantastic. Like it separates a lot now, all the different colors. It's not just one blob of brown and pale skin color it's like shiny here and it's dull there it just makes a big difference I use Corex white now to go over all the areas that will be glowing green which is mostly the warp stones and I even painted the eyes on camera which is a very risky thing to do but I got these new brushes recently and they are just perfect for painting eyes they're so thin and it was kind of successful no failure this time. Then I use the fluorescent green, any brand's fine to be honest. And then I just airbrush from above. You can do this without an airbrush, I did it before. You just kind of paint it in the middle of the gem and then you just glaze it around the side of it. And the same here, you can just glaze it on the back there and then just make it nice and thick on the stone. But not too thick, it's very subtle. It's 
and I even put it in the center of these grills as well to have a bit of glow and you can even paint over all that all this green green um, that I did earlier and it just brightens up the the, um, the base a bit more makes it pop and really add some interest to the model too fluorescent yellow now. Any brand's fine to be honest. I use AK mostly, but seriously any brand is fine. And I use this, I, I make a thick dollop <laughs> and I just pull it on the on the uh, gems and the warp stones and also in the center of the grill as well. And I kind of glaze it and feather it out. So it's nice and thick here. Just to make it, so the green before is kind of like the outer glow like an OSL and then this part is like the hottest or the brightest area that's why I use yellow then I use a brighter silver now I just paint over all the uh, blades and make them a bit sharper and a bit more interesting a bit more threatening especially when they're on the table smashing other units up you want them to look scary and like they're gonna you know slice and dice So the final part is using Nilux Oxide, but you can thin down some bright turquoise as well, it's fine. And you can just go in all the recesses, not all of them, but any recesses that will be prominent and you want to add a bit of interest and oxidation to some parts of it, just to break some parts of it up. And that's it really, and it's all done. So this is how they look. So I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did then please leave a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more then please subscribe. If you have any requests even then please uh, comment on the video and let me know and I'll see what I can do. Thank you, bye.